Okay, well, Carla, I just wanted to know uh, what attracted you to composition? Yeah, so I've always been kind of a how things work person rather than just knowing the facts of things. So music theory has always been really important to me. Um, when I was eight, I, I was part of the Puerto Rico pre-college uh, conservatory uh, program in the conservatory of Puerto Rico. And so they taught me a lot of uh, music theory, different, uh, many things that I didn't know were possible to, to take from the music that's been written. So I, I wanted to create my own music with all the knowledge that I had of music theory. That's so wonderful. And this is coming from your training as a bassoonist, right? You're, you're a bassoonist? Yes, I started uh, vocal, then I did piano. But when I moved to Florida, I transitioned to making bassoon my primary instrument. Can you give like a little introduction to the piece? Yeah, uh, the nymph, it's a short flute, um, a tonal piece. Uh, inspired by my love for Greek mythology, um, because nymphs are in Greek mythology are nature, female nature deities that are there just, they represent aspects of nature, like the sea, uh, forests, mountains, all those things. And I wanted to write a piece that uh, represented their beauty, simpl simplicity, grace, but also was a little bit um, mischievous as nature often is. Um, so I wrote it in 5-4 time rather than the 4-4 four, four more standard kind of uh, normal time signature. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that listeners, uh, when they hear the piece, they can imagine little uh, fairy nymphs uh, running around the forest. <laughs> <laughs> that is a beautiful image and one of the things that that i really like about your piece too is just how clear the form is it, it's um like a miniature with really tight ideas and a kind of overall arc form from some calm to it developed but in a rhapsodic way so that totally connects with what you were saying about the nymphs being playful or mischievous and then kind of calming back down yeah thank you yeah i, I really tried to make it as free as possible mm -hmm. and also because I was adhering to um, a serial kind of pattern, I don't remember exactly well, what, I think it was, um, it might have been a, a tetrad, um, uh, but I, I was adhering to uh, numbers uh, aligned to the, to the scale. So I really wanted to break from the rigidity of uh, following a serial pattern and I wanted to make it as free as possible. That's interesting that you did use a row or a part of a row, it sounds like, because, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was at, at the beginning of my composition training. Um, hmm. I, I did, everything was a serial. I, I didn't want it to sound rehearsed or, or planned out. I wanted it to sound like improvised in a way. Wow, because actually I feel that there are tonal elements to it when I play it, or at least tonal centers come out. Yes, I, I I think I did that on purpose because I am so used to tonal music. That was my first introduction to atonal music, so I was kind of kind of lost in this new world. So I was like, I'm gonna stick to C. <laughs> I'm gonna stick to 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 a tonal center. I'm gonna stick to what I know. So it's the most tonal atonal piece that I could have written. <laughs> wow! And so your other pieces have not really been serial or atonal. Or well, I. I started composition lessons last year um, in about February, and all I did with my um, uh, teacher, my, my professor, was atonal. Mm -hmm. And I've written a little bit on my own that was um, a lot more tonal, very completely tonal. Um, but with my studies, everything has been atonal. It's, it's kind of a way for me to break free from everything I'm used to. That's a really um, interesting approach because yeah and do you know why your composition teacher had you do that was it to have parameters to start out with or is, is he himself someone who embraces that? I, he is someone that embraces more atonal pieces mm -hmm. um he writes mostly atonal um mm -hmm. but i think it just was for me to have guidelines and then to break free from those guidelines afterwards okay wow that that is interesting because i have heard um other young composers, but also co composition professors talk about this idea that guidelines or parameters are really valuable. Yeah, for, uh, for me uh, specifically, I'm a very um, 
kind of, this is the whole concept of uh, language versus math. Mm -hmm. I am more of a logical math person in that way. So for me, patterns and, and really sticking to things is really important to me. So I feel like that was the best beginning to a composition journey I could have had because it, it's, hard, it's hard for me to break free from patterns. So I, I feel like doing that on purpose is really good for me as a person too. <laughs> well, you know, that's really resonating with me um, in, in terms of music and music pedagogy. Uh, because it's like you need to have the technique in order to have the expression. You really can't have one without the other. Yeah, I think that's totally the approach my professor was going for. So for me to just have the ability to to create something out of something so rigid and to have the technique and then just to break free from that. And sadly, because of uh, my applications, I couldn't continue much after um, after the atonal, I was I was just about to get to tonal music, and then I, I had these puzzle applications, and then I had to focus on that for a bit. But mm -hmm. I hope to soon continue to explore tonal music more. <laughs>